Hey guys, welcome to this bonus video where I read and answer your emails and questions. Thank you very much for all the great uh, feedback and here you go. Is there a right way to pray? At its core, prayer isn't a method or a style or a certain set of words and actions. At its core, prayer is to live in the joyful awareness of the presence of God. Our grandmothers and grandfathers in the faith taught us that, you know, closing our eyes, folding our hands, resting quietly together can help us cut out the distractions so we can focus on God. But this is just one of the unlimited ways of praying. My friend was a college dancer, and for her, dancing made her joyfully aware of the presence of God. Dancing was prayer for her. St. Francis went out into the woods and talked with the birds. Jesus went away from the crowd up on the mountain to be by himself. The priest Ezra read from the scripture in front of the whole assembly of God's people. So really, whenever, wherever, however you place yourself in the presence of God is the right way to pray. When is the right time to pray? When is the right time to pray? Well, this is what Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says. Pray in the Spirit at all times. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. There you go. Why do people pray so often if they just need to pray a few times every day? I wonder if they just want to or not. Some people might pray because they feel obligated. Many people, however, uh, who have grown close to God in their hearts and their souls, pray often because they want to pray. They don't feel satisfied until they have spent some time intentionally focusing on the presence of God. So prayer is a joy, not an obligation. It is something they get to do, not something they have to do. And God wants prayer to be like this for all of us. In fact, this is what God says to the people of every nation from uh, the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. God says, I will bring you to my holy mountain and make you joyful in my house of prayer. That's Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. Why do you need to get confirmed if God already knows your heart? Well, confirmation is an ancient tradition that started because there weren't enough bishops to do baptisms. So local leaders did the baptisms. And then bishops would come around sooner or later and confirm the baptism by laying out of hands in blessing and with the anointing of oil. At first, you know, the bishops would come around right away, maybe after a few months or so. But eventually, the time between the bishops' visits got longer and longer and longer and longer and longer, so much so that the baptized babies weren't confirmed by the bishop until those babies were teenagers. And so we have held on to the tradition of confirmation because people attached significance to the celebration. It was a type of coming-of-age ceremony. Confirmation at St. Luke's, however, is a way of celebrating what God has done for you in baptism. Forgiving your sins, blessing you with the Holy Spirit, and commissioning you for work in God's kingdom. Your mentors, as representatives of the entire congregation, bless you with the laying on of hands and the anointing with oil. Confirmation, therefore, isn't really about your relationship with God or God knowing your heart. In a way, it's rather a confirmation uh, an affirmation of what God has already done for you in baptism, that God loves you and that we love you, and as a baptized child of God, we celebrate your continued life in the community of believers. What's up with that old language, these and thy and thine and art? What does that mean? Well, the best way to find out, the best way to find out is to look on page 91 in your Lutheran book of worship, Right there it has the old English version and it has the newer version. So, I'll read it out loud for you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. A good modern English translation of our age-old prayer. Another age-old question. Why don't we use incense in church? 
Well, burning incense is a very ancient tradition, and it uh, comes from as old as our ancient Israelite ancestors. Psalm 141, in fact, talks about our prayers coming before God like incense. But today we don't use it because it irritates some people's noses, it isn't really a part of our culture, it hasn't been a high priority. But if you want to plan some cool stuff like burning incense in worship, because it is a part of our ancient tradition, you could be a part of our worship and music planning committee because they're going to do all kinds of fun stuff like that. Why do some people pray with their hands folded and some people just pray with their hands together? Hmm. Well, we can pray with all sorts of postures and poses because really it's about whatever helps us focus on the presence of God. That's what really matters. What does extol mean? E-X-T-O-L. It means to praise and lift up. What does the word trespasses mean? Trespass means to go on someone's land or property without their permission. And it means to cross that boundary illegally. And so when we say it in the Lord's Prayer, we're saying it in a general way, though. And it means just sins. Uh, sins against God and sins against our neighbor. When did you first learn the Lord's Prayer? I learned the Lord's Prayer from my parents. We prayed it together every night before bed. How did you know what verses to reference in your videos? I use a tool called BibleGateway.com. It helps me search for Bible verses using keywords and topics. As you've gotten older, how has the meaning of Hallowed Be Your Name changed for you? I have come to realize that hallowing God's name means stepping into a posture of prayer as much as possible. When I am more and more aware of God's presence, I call on God's name more and more often. When you get into the kingdom of God and see God for the first time, what would you ask him? What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? How old were you when you knew you wanted to be a pastor? I was in my second year of college at Michigan State University when I accepted that God was calling me to be a pastor. What would sanctuaries have looked like in Martin Luther's time? Sanctuaries, as you know, Martin, were made of stone most often. There were no chairs. People stood when they went to church. Often there were big stained glass windows with pictures of saints and scenes of the Bible, uh, Jesus' life, and the Old Testament. And uh, if you guys search Wittenberg Castle Church, you can see where Martin Luther himself preached and taught and led worship. How do you show God that you are ready for his kingdom? God's kingdom has one commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. People who live in God's kingdom do their best to follow God's instructions. Ultimately, however, we know that we can never truly follow that commandment completely. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glory, so God himself makes us ready for his kingdom through baptism into Christ's death and resurrection and the pouring out of God's Holy Spirit into our hearts. So, hold fast to your baptism. And pray always in the Spirit, for God himself has already prepared you for eternal life with him, a life that starts today. How do you get over being self-conscious about praying out loud? Practice. How can I be more clear on what God wants me to do? God desires us to be with him and aware of the Holy Spirit always, at all times. So, we have lots of ways of accessing God Think of uh, all the ways that God comes to us. Prayer, worship, conversation with the saints, holy scripture, holy communion, holy baptism. All these ways God is coming to us. So seek, knock, and ask, and God will show you the way. God has promised. How can I be more aware of what God has given me that I have generally taken for granted? Give stuff away, serve poor people, and say prayers of thanksgiving for all the things that God is giving you and blessing you with each day. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed the bonus video. It's been fun to make. I love all those questions. And keep them coming because it's great when we can talk about all these things together. God, peace. <laughs>